Hello and welcome. My name is Angela Thompson and I appreciate you joining me. Today I'd like to share a project with you on behalf of tinypandora.com. Let's begin. Today I'm going to show you how I made these beautiful fantasy floral pieces. One of my other pastimes is acrylic pour painting and I have adapted some of those techniques to work with liquid polymer clay. Today I'm going to show you six variations of this style, which is called a string pull. And then I'm going to show you how I finish the pieces by making one piece into a pennant and another piece into a brooch. Condition your polymer clay and roll it out on your thickest setting. Then cut out your desired shapes and bake them according to the manufacturer's instructions. Today we're going to work strictly with Sculpey liquid clay products. Um, they've released a new line of yellow, blue, and red primaries that are opaque and just change the way that you can mix colors for using liquid clay. We're also going to need white or pearl or a mix. I like to mix them together. Um, and then some liquid clay softener. The first thing you're going to do is open your bottles and stir them thoroughly. There's a lot of sediment in the clay that settles on the bottom and it really needs to be recombined so it um, um, retains its properties when you bake it. When I first used it, I didn't stir it and my pieces came out brittle and they broke really easy and I didn't understand. So I did what I failed to do the first time and read the instructions and now we know. You're going to want to mix up some colors to work with in this project. So using your liquid clays, go ahead and make a couple of tones of green, your leaf um, colors, and then you're going to need yellow and you're also going to need whatever color you want your flowers to be and then your white pearl or some mix thereof for your background. You'll notice when you start pouring the liquid clay out of the um, containers that they are a little bit different in consistency. The white and the pearl tend to be a little bit thicker. Um, the yellow I've noticed is thinner and your blue and the red seem to be very similar in consistency. So when we're working with a flow type painting, which is basically what we're doing with this liquid clay, we need to be concerned with the viscosity of the liquids. We want the colors to interact with each other, but not to blend completely to where they lose any kind of definition. Um, so here I am mixing my white color and you'll notice that I've added quite a bit of the clear to it to get it to be the right consistency. Um, you want your white to be about the consistency of say half and half where your colors need to be more along the lines of warm honey. When your colors come off the end of your stick they need to make a little bitty pile in the center. You can see a peak. Um, like you would if you were making um, meringue with your egg whites. So you get this little peak and then it smooths out into the rest of the bowl. That's what we're looking for. Um, see how the white is just a little bit thicker. It comes off the stick a little bit slower. It makes a bigger pile before it dissipates. So we want um, the green to be similar to the blue that I just showed you. It needs to be about the consistency again of warm honey. And I'm going to keep adding the clear liquid to that and stirring it until I get it to be the right consistency. I also want uh, my yellow and the color that I'm using for my flowers to be the same um, viscosity is the proper term I think for it. The clay will react with each other but not blend completely. Once you get your colors to the right consistency, you're going to add two drops of the liquid clay softener to each of your pots and stir it thoroughly to combine it. Okay. 
Now, just a note, when I say colors, not your white, you do not add liquid clay softener to your white. We don't want that reaction that it will cause. So we're going to take a look at this yellow again because I know that the paint flow is the critical part to this and that's the part you want to get right. So you're looking again for warm honey. It's just making a tiny little pile in the center and then it dissipates. This darker green is really, really thick and you can see that I'm having a little trouble stirring it. Um, but once I get it all stirred and recombined, it is the proper consistency. It just has a, a tendency to separate. Any of your primary colors do that with um, the Sculpey uh, liquid clay. So it's important that you stir and stir often. So now that you've got your colors mixed, we're going to line them up on a tile. We're going to decant them onto this tile because it's just an easier work surface because we're dealing with dipping thread. And we want to be able to control the thread and we don't want our fingers all on the liquid clay. Um, so I found that putting them out on the tile in this kind of line gives me a natural way to to dip the middle of the thread, that's, which is what I'm working with, um, and keep the mess off of my hands. It also um, allows me to have a little bit more control. It lets me go back and forth um, with the thread and that helps load it. So make a line on the tile with all your colors. Next, you're going to take your oven safe vessel, which is what you're going to use to hold your base while you bake it. Roll up some painter's tape and put it on the top. You want it to um, be sticky on both sides so you can press the cabochon or your base into the top of it and it holds it. It's just easier um, than trying to lift a uh, base full of liquid clay off of a flat surface. That's very messy. Okay, so press in your cabochon or your base onto the top of the tape and make sure it's stable. And then you're going to put a coating of the white or pearl on it. Our technique is wet on wet, so we need that white base down to work. Now hold your thread on either ends with your fingers. It should be six to eight inches long and a comfortable length for you to use drag it back and forth through the paint. Now you're going to lay it down onto your clay. See the little dots of clay clinging to the thread? That's what we're using to make this technique. All right, see how it gives you little dots? And then we're pulling it micro movement here, just a tiny little bit back toward you, toward the base of it. And that splits the dots of paint down the center and then um, it elongates the bottom a little bit. So you end up with this little heart shape type thing, which in our little instance here, it's a leaf. And that's what we're going to do. So lay in several lines of the darker green first. Let's see if we can zoom in. There we go. Okay. So that gives you a better view. Sorry for the camera wobble. It's all on one table and my floors aren't even in this old house. So everything wobbles. Load your thread with more clay. Drop it down. You see the little dots? Pull it slightly towards you. They become leaves like a heart shape. Um, see the center section here? That didn't quite have enough clay on it. It's an easy fix. Go right back over it. Just drop it into the same place, do the same thing, pull down, and then you have a little more distinction. Um, this technique will never be a crisp look. It's always going to have kind of a, a blurry, out of focus look to it, but that's part of the beauty in my opinion. I'm going to continue laying down some more of the darker green lines. And these are our background leaves. Um, anytime you look at foliage, you'll see a lot of green and yellow variances. And we're just trying to mimic that. Um, because the light will layer on top of the dark easier and look more uh, natural than laying um, dark on top of light, I'm just choosing to work from my darkest color forward. Um, I'm going to switch to the lighter green now and start laying some of that in. You want to fill in your white space, but you don't want to completely get rid of it. Negative space is always a good thing. It um, helps the eye pick out the elements better. 
and it just looks better in my opinion when you have um, negative space that you're working with. So I'm going to keep on adding some more of the lighter green color in and those will go between the darker green on top of them curved over them any way you want to do it and you're always going to use the same motion um, with this particular type where you lay the thread down watch the color come off and pull it slightly towards you and then lift your thread from the top towards you in one quick motion so you're not dragging your thread back through the clay that you've laid down you are lifting it out of the clay you keep working it until you are happy with the amount of um, foliage that you've got and then you can move on to your yellow your yellow is kind of an accent uh, let's fix this there we go okay so again sorry about the wobble um, now we're going to add in some yellow and you can see where the lighter green has a halo effect of the, of the yellow i think that that is just something we work with um, we use it to our advantage it just makes a more natural look to it so keep adding in your yellow sometimes i'll put yellow on its own sometimes i'll drape it across or on top of the lighter or the darker greens it all it all looks glamorous whatever way you want to do it it will work when you're happy with your foliage it's time to start adding your flowers and you can lay them any way you want to i'm going to um, consider this a stalk type cluster of flowers so i'm going to do the same motion i'm going to decide where i want it i'm going to place it drag it a little toward me and lift it up there is um, a lot of blue on this thread so i'm just going to keep going with it you don't always have to redip your thread and you don't need to wipe your thread between your colors um, it looks very natural if you just allow your colors and your threads to uh, work together and they blend but you still have distinction all right And I think that we'll call this piece a wrap. So let's fix one more thing. There we go. And now I'm going to bake it. Bake these pieces immediately. This is what it looks like after it's baked and it has a coat of magic gloss. And this one I made into a brooch and that's how the back looks. I'm going to show you another example with this piece when I uh, was making it I wanted to have a little more wave in the uh, foliage so the easiest way to do that is to let your thread sink in where you first put it on and the clay itself will give it a little bit of an anchor and make it easier to move your thread and put the curvatures in it so I just wanted to um, to have a um, visual motion within the wave of the of the foliage and how it was going so I'm going to lay in the diff different colors of the greens and then I will put some yellow in as well I always think that the more tones you have the more um, believable the piece looks remember that anytime um, it doesn't quite have enough liquid clay on it you can always reapply the thread right back into the same area And this piece, we're going to put some red flowers on it. I was kind of envisioning um, just meadow flowers, basically. So we're going to use the same motion, drops, put it down, slight pull towards you, lift it back up.
I'm starting again with my base coat. You'll notice that this self levels, so you don't have to be overly accurate. Just put it on and spread it out. And within a couple of seconds, it's going to flow out and even out all over the piece. On this type of um, pool, once you load your thread and you lay it down, you're not going to do the, the motions that we've been doing before. This time you're going to pull the top of the string back on itself and drag it through the clay. It just gives a little bit more of a stalk look to your um, vegetation instead of a vine and leaves. Um, so I'm going to lay in some darker green. And what I'm going to show you this time is kind of a variance on like a trumpet flower. And that flower is pretty big and takes up a lot of the space. So we just want um, some background vegetation colors to support the visual impact of it being a floral. So I'm going to continue laying in my yellows and greens. And you don't need a ton because the flower is going to take up a lot of this space. You just want something in the background to accentuate your flower. Now I'm going to load my thread with my blue, which is my flower color, and I'm going to start at the top of my form, and I'm going to go side to side like in an S shape, but with a few more curves than an S, back and forth, back and forth. So put your um, string at the top, let it settle in, and then it'll give you an anchor to start your wiggle motion. Back and forth, back and forth. And then when you get to the base, just pull it straight towards you. Don't lift it or anything like that, just one pull. See that little blue there? We don't like it. So I'm gonna scrape it off and then I'm gonna put a drop of my white back in and it's gonna flow in and fill up that space. Anytime you have something you wanna correct, you can do that. Just scrape it off and reapply. This is another quick example of the same kind of floral. And then I'm gonna show you how I finished um, the piece prior and this piece as well. To finish the pieces, I have rolled out my color on my thickest setting and I'm going to cut out and texture the same shape that my piece is. And then the long thin strip will be on a medium setting to make the trim to give it a nice finish. Make sure that you use liquid clay anytime you're adhering raw clay to baked clay.
All right, my pieces have cured in the oven and now they're cool to the touch. So I'm going to go ahead and finish them. The first thing that I want to do is take an alcohol wipe and thoroughly wipe off the top of the pieces. Sometimes the clay softener can leave a little bit of a residue, which could cause some cloudiness um, in your top coat. So go ahead and wipe them really well and let them dry. I'm going to finish these two pieces with the Lisa Pavelka Magic Gloss. You can get that at tinypandora.com. Um, the first thing that I want to do is the edges. Pandora showed us this trick a while back, and if you outline your pieces and pre-bake that, it prevents a little bit of that pulling away that any kind of self-doming resin will do. So I'm going to do the outline around the edges and then cure them under my UV lamp for 10 minutes. Once they're cured um, for the 10 minute time, I'm gonna pull them back out, flood the interior, and then using a toothpick or needle tool, I'm going to pull the resin across the um, top of the edge that I've already put down, and it will cling to that and just gives a nice little flawless finish. Um, then they'll go back into my UV oven. I like to cure them for about 20 minutes, and um, then they will be done and ready to wear. I hope that you've enjoyed this technique and this video. There is a PDF available at tinypandora.com to accompany this video. Um, also, let me know if you've got any questions. I'm looking forward to hearing your comments. Thanks for your time. Bye.